Hi, Alan Papaleo here for Jatai International. So I'm gonna show you some differences between two of my most uh, favorite tools in the salon. The one with the black handle you see here, the feather razor, is the one I use for almost all my cutting. I use this to put in really beautiful shapes, whether it's a graduated bob or a layered cut. Even my one lengths, I use my black handled feather razor. But when I want more texture in a haircut, I put this one down, I pick up the one with the red handle, the texturizer, because this takes out 50% less hair. So I'm not worried about really taking out the, the support of the hair. I'm only going in there and giving it beautiful movement and texture. This is gonna show you some very different techniques. So let's get started. So here you see the mannequin. She is uh, already cut to a basic one length. And the reason I chose the blonde mannequin is to show you how you can texturize a, a head of hair, light colored hair also, uh, using the texturizing razor. And this is really a, a, a very great tool to use when you want to give a sort of like stealth support into the hair. Um, again, we know that the texturizing razor will take out 50% less hair, so you're not going to really make the hair collapse onto itself. What I'm going to do is show you the, the basic way you might do this. Uh, you're taking the hair. Uh, now, what I'm doing is leaving the, really the top layer is not gonna be touched at all. Even though it's in my section, top layer is coming down. And you can normally take this if you want to and just on the side, do the whole, the whole razor and just lightly skim the surface. Very, very lightly. I start, I don't put the razor in flat this way here on, on the edge because it'll cut a lot of hair. I start with my razor very, very uh, solid on the hair and I just start to turn it lightly. And you can see it's a very little amount of hair coming. And that'll make a big difference in how this hair moves underneath. Now, that's one way of using this tool. Another way is doing the same type of sectioning, but instead of taking the razor onto the hair flat, weave the razor in and then work your section. Now, when I weave, I don't, just, I don't take it in and out this way here because that pulls the hair way out of line. Watch what I'm doing here. It's, it's almost a circular motion. It goes in, back, in, back, in, back, in, back, and then very, very lightly. And again, not a whole lot of hair coming out. So this is going to soften the interior of the hair and also give it some slight support. Notice also, I'm not going up into that very top layer because that's the length. That's why I want to keep that, that total length at the top hiding the underneath texture. Now, that's doing it vertically. If you want to do it horizontally, you can do the same thing. Take horizontal sections. Now, the hair is always slightly damp. I don't do this on dry hair. The same thing but I'll show it to you sideways here. I'm taking it and I'm just weaving it in, and then it's springing it down very, very lightly on the ends. And you see the amount of hair coming out. And this is, instead of layering the hair all through, you can keep the semblance of one length, but you can give it the support it needs and the movement so it's not so heavy and flat. And as you look at this, you don't see any marks in the hair at all, but you do see it's starting to pop out and starting to have a little more flexibility and a little more movement in the shape. This to me is really what a hallmark of a really good cut when it has that versatility. Now around the front here, same thing. Notice I'm not pulling it out of its fall, natural fall. It's right where it falls naturally. I'm not way up here. I'm keeping it down at a slight angle. Again, the razor goes in, 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 and then down. Now, if you want to, you can also do the same thing, but skim it over the top. And that'll just give you just a little bit of, a little bit of movement on the ends, but very, very, very lightly, just to take off the edge of the top layer, giving it a little more lift, now I want to show you a very important part about anything you're doing with a texturizing razor. If you take your sections and you start cutting that close to the scalp, that's where the short pieces are going to be. 
If that's what you want, that's fine. Normally, what I like to do is sort of bend the hair in, and I can see just where the center is, and I'll start my texture right through there. That's just enough to give it that little bit of movement I need, a little bit of volume. You know, when you see how the real design of this razor, now this is genius to me because, first of all, high quality steel. What I'm cutting, the hair will not get clogged in the teeth. Also, you're not gonna cut yourself. It's safe for me to use, easy to hold, very ergonomically designed. So I think that when you, when you take both razors, cut your basic shape in with your black handled, regular feather razor, and grab your red-handled texturizing razor, get in there and move through it. You're gonna create a beautiful shape that has movement and I think it's really dramatic. You can see, now I, I did it basically on the heavier side to show you that it can lift heavier hair and give it a lot of volume, a lot of shape. The other side that really has nothing in it except this, just basically a one length cut, uh, it's pretty but it doesn't have the movement. But when you go to the opposite side, you can see the movement. And what's kind of cool about this for me is that you don't see a lot of layers in the hair, but they're in there because they're integrated using the weaving technique with the texturizing razor. So uh, all in all, I think it's a great way of giving uh, one length hair sort of that stealth layering look, uh, give it movement and give it a lot of body without making it look too over layered.